What would you do if you found out something you cherished was possessed? Would you try and throw it away? Destroy it? Maybe sell it to some unsuspecting buyer? And how did it become haunted in the first place? Those are the questions we're going to ask as we explore those very objects. Some you might be familiar with, others so obscure that they've been lost to the sands of time until now. I'm your host, Evan O'Hare. Welcome to Haunted Objects. Thanks for watching Haunted Objects. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and click the bell so you can be notified when new episodes of Haunted Objects goes live. Now back to the show. Today we're going to take a look at a collection of items which have all shared their moment of courtroom celebrity. Strange disputes surrounding a haunted doll named Angela, whose eon old spirit doesn't believe in the repayment of debt. 1940s ventriloquist dummy whose restless nature scared a woman into a legal battle. So before you buy that trinket at a garage sale or accept that family inheritance, Take a look at these haunted objects. Order, order, I say. We begin our items with the disturbing tale of a vanquilicus dummy head named Mr. Fritz. Made by an American POW in the 1940s, a collector by the name of Michael Diamond was gifted the doll by a World War II military dealer who had become increasingly unnerved by the remnants of it and the strange happenings which seemed to occur around it after dark. The glass case which contained the warped, weathered remains would mysteriously be found open. The eyes would open when previous closed and his children reported hearing mechanical laughter coming from wherever it was being kept. Once Michael took custody of Mr. Fritz, he placed him in his freak room, a room which houses a rather impressive private collection of oddities and supernatural items. It wasn't long before weird stuff started happening there too. He found that the glass case would too open, even when explicitly sealed with tape or rope. What was once a twice a week event would soon become a daily ritual. He also noted that once the case containing the head had even moved. Mr. Fritz, it seemed, wanted to be free. Ever curious, Mr. Diamond took to fixing a GoPro up inside the room to see for himself the nightmare antics. I don't go into the freak room every day. When I did go in, I noticed that the door on the cabinet was open. If you look at the video closely, some haven't interpreted his mouth moving as help me, help me. Notice that if you look at the base of the wooden stick the head is speared onto, you can see the mechanisms seemingly moving on their own in order to make the mouth speak. Mr. Diamond declared during the court case that he did not doctor the footage in any way, shape, or form. But are we to believe his claim? Take another look and decide for yourself. Who could this be? And what is it trying to say? Perhaps learning a little more about the birth of Mr. Fritz can help to shed some light on this. 
A small handwritten note accompanied the eerie doll. It was a bio of sorts and went on to explain that he was the clever creation of Private Billy Booth, who had been a children's entertainer and puppeteer before the war had started. Billy was a POW in Poland, in Stalag 2B. It was one of the first Nazi concentration camps then and became a POW camp. He had made Mr. Fritz with German newspapers soaked in potato starch and painted him with smuggled pot of pink glass that a Polish farmer had given him. For 18 months, the duo did their best to raise the morale and entertain the allied POWs. Reportedly, Billy was so good, he even had the German guards breaking into a chuckle or two. Tragically, for Billy, he and nine other POWs were led into a field to dig a pit and shot. The crime not working hard enough. The camp was liberated on January 28, 1945, just two weeks later. Mr. Fritz was taken back and gifted to Private Booth's family. Is it conceivable that Billy is the spirit trapped within the doll of his own making? Desperately still trying to escape. Does he spend his hours trapped in the box, waiting for his time to be liberated? Or is this just another stunt designed to attract more eyes to Mr. McDonald's traveling show of taxidermist carcasses, four-legged lambs, and spiritual props? Who can say? certainly not Mr. Fritz. What we can say is that the item did manage to generate some promotion for both Diamond and the Freak Room when he was taken to court by his wife on the UK ITV show, Judge Rinder. The topic of contention, you guessed it, none other than Mr. Fritz. In mid-July 2019, what did he come home with, please, Sally? Uh, he came home with a ventriloquist doll. You bought a ventriloquist dummy head, correct? I was given it, Judge. She likened their home to a hammer house of horrors and was so terrified by the doll that she refused to stay in the house for three nights after the video footage was captured. In fact, the cost of doing so was what had brought her to pursue a claim through the courts. Can I see Mr. Fritz? You'd like to see him, Judge? Yes, please. Hmm. Are you happy to unveil him? Thank you. If you're happy, Judge. I'm perfectly happy, yes. <laughs> Lord. Hello, Mr. Fritz. Though her case was dismissed, her pleas to not be a bed of supernatural activities appeared to fall on her husband's deaf ears. Mr. Fritz, as a compromise, however, remains covered and chained up. Next up in the courtroom of the supernatural to be heard is a curious case of Angela. Her previous owner, Mark, and her new owner, Chris. All three found themselves the center of a blistering courtroom battle on national television when they appeared in Judge Rinder's court with a seemingly simple claim. Or was it? Thing is, you agreed to purchase this. Yeah, that's right, I did. How I, much I, for? Uh, well, obviously, I said to Mark, I'll, uh, you know, pay him £50 a week. She's very close to me, and she's, good. She, she's, she's very fond of me. You don't think she's evil, unlike no, Mark? No, I don't think she's evil. She's not as... sort of evil, she's just a little bit misunderstood? Yeah, basically. How do you know? I mean, what does she say to you? I mean, does she say, I'm having a bad day, I'll go outside <laughs> for a cigarette? <laughs> The central issue being contested was a man's claim that he never received the full payment of 800 pounds for his tale of a reportedly haunted doll. The original owner, Mark Davies, a seller of haunted items, obtained the doll from the high priestess of a coven in Cornwall, but was experiencing what was to be described as demonic activity. As the story goes, Angela was not on general sale but Chris had a dream where Angela was being buried in a Asada carrier bag and contacted Mark to question whether he had buried the doll. 
To both their surprise and shock, Mark had in fact buried the doll after an evening of particularly heavy activity. Wow. Arrangements were made to send the doll to Chris, who tested it and was getting lots of EVP, electronic voice phenomenon. Seemingly elated with this purchase, Chris continued to bond and investigate. Mr. Davies, however, was not quite so happy as one thing Chris did not do was complete the transaction. Now, sir, you sold or you agreed to sell Angela to Chris. How much for? £800, Judge. Chris, did you agree to pay that money? Um, I did at the time. You did at the time, that's very important. Now, did you think the doll, before you received it, was worth £800? Oh, no, no. I, well, I, why I, did you promise to pay £800? Because I wanted to investigate it. I was, I was intrigued by it. Now, to me, she's worth more than £800. Well, that makes it rather <laughs> more difficult for you. Where's the money? Mark was so unhappy, in fact, that he ultimately filed a complaint against Chris for non-payment. Chris's defence was the doll was threatening him if he were to pay the money. Mr. Power told the courtroom that after paying an initial 200 pounds, Angela told him not to pay anything further to Mr. Davies. Where's the money? Well, Angela, she told me that, that I mustn't pay it. She also asked for a new box to be constructed for her to reside in. What's the rest of that stuff in, I mean, it, that's a coffin, I presume. Yeah, that was a, a well, that wasn't the one, the original one, what she came in. She wanted me to make her a new one. She's very close to me, and she's good, she, she's, she's very fond of me. Unsurprisingly, the judge ordered that the rest of the money should be paid to Mr. Davies since he no longer was in possession of Angela. Mr. Powers, however, was in happy possession and has since been utilizing Angela and spreading the word of her demonic talents. On his YouTube channel and via magazine articles, it seems Angela is still as active and tenuous as ever. Okay, here we are. His partner Sharon spent a night in a caravan with the doll, during which she claims to have been not only choked by him and traumatized by poltergeist activities, which included, but was not limited to, moving chairs on command, making scratching and scraping noises, hiding clothing and electronics, locking and unlocking doors. Angela, it seems, has also been requesting to go back to Mark, even after refuting his requests to be paid for her. You believe that he owes the money, 600 pounds left, correct? Yes, Judge. You believed it had a value, you promised to pay, and you didn't. That's straightforward. I don't need the assistance of Angela to say to you, sir, this court awards you 600 pounds. Thank you, George. Do you think a doll can become so possessive of its owner that it can control their every move? Or is this just a case of a crafty con artist looking to skip out on the bill? Maybe something is truly sinister at play. You decide. So there you have it. What do all our objects on this episode have in common? Other than being allegedly haunted, of course. They have all been unwitting participants on a reality courtroom TV show. Can people attach themselves to an object? Is residual energy real? If so, why would someone want to obtain an object that's possessed? Could these fascinating stories simply be a case of owners using their imaginations to skirt financial and personal obligations? Or does something more sinister preside in the courtroom? Whether the cursed objects shown this evening are of myth, urban legend, or fantastical paranormal occurrences is for you to decide. I hope I haven't left you eyeballing your shelves and contemplating your latest thrift shop purchase. But if I did, get in touch. Tell us about your possessed possession. And maybe we'll feature it right here on Haunted Objects.